Nice. Great. So welcome. So just landing in, arriving onto the floor or into the room that you're in, onto your yoga mat. And just notice what shape suits you right now. So does legs straight, does knees bent suit you, does moving a little bit to land into your body, you know, shifting from side to side, you know, that we don't have to lie down and be still, you know, we can sh sh shimmy or, you know, shuffle or just kind of land, you know, um, it's very nice repositioning or like just acknowledging whatever it is that you need to acknowledge and moving in whatever way feels comfortable. And that could be with your knees wide, that could be with your legs together, that could be with your legs straight. And just find how do you settle. So as you land, as you settle, as you just kind of wind your way into yourself, into the deep of you. How is this moment in your body? How is this feeling in your body today? Um, Last few days, it has this feeling of it being warm, but cold, but too much clothes, but too little clothes, but you know, so it has that funny, muggy, thunderstorm kind of feeling to it. So maybe acknowledge that in your sensations. And perhaps this is the first time that you've checked in with your physical body all day. Maybe you were working and busy all day, or perhaps you were doing other stuff. And now it's time to settle in and check in with yoga. Um, all kind of still working off a new routine, a new rhythm, but this newness has now become the ordinary, which is very interesting. We're now in the ordinary of all of this. And then just feel your breath into your belly. So as you deepen your breath down into your belly, as you begin to really dive with the breath down into the deep of your pelvic floor, into the sides of your waist, into the lower back, how does this feel in this moment in your body? that filling of the breath you know, have deep appreciation of I can really deepen my breath down into my belly and I can widen into the lower back and I can dive into the sides of my waist And as the, as the air passes through my lungs, I feel the movement of it or the passage of the air into my lungs and how that affects my whole body and more so than uh, the torso, more so than anything else. Nice. And then just check in, see if there is a difference between the right shoulder and the left shoulder or the right side of your rib cage and the left side of your rib cage, the right side of your buttock and hip to the left side of your buttock and hip, your right thigh to your left thigh, your right knee, left knee, your right calf, left calf, your right foot and left foot, all of your toes. Can you feel one foot clearer than the other? Can you feel all of the toes on one foot and all of the toes on the other foot? Nice. And then from all the different places that you can feel right now, where do you feel well in your body? Where do you connect to a sense of comfort or ease or okayness? Or just what's easy to feel right now? Where can you be in your body with ease?
Uh, I, think, I don't know if I said this to you last week, and I'm never sure, but I was thinking of that story. You know that joke, um, so somebody has just broken their wrist and they, they're getting a cast on their arm and they go, Doctor, Doctor, when I come out of my cast, will I be able to play the piano? And he said, yes, sure, no problem. And he goes, oh, great, because I could never play the piano before. And so it's that thing where, you know, um, if you want to be able to move with attention and care when you're really sensitive and you need care, then you need to cultivate and practice that when you don't. So the things that we cultivate and practice, they're there when we need them. And so, you know, yeah, can you be, can you cultivate a practice of awareness, of kindness, of attentiveness to your inner sensations to the inner way that you move and how you care for your wellness and then when you really need it then it's there which is amazing so bending your knees and bring your feet to stand feet are hip distance apart and they're flat on the floor your hands are either resting on the floor beside you or they're resting on your belly and then as we always do just draw your lower back down and flatten it to the floor as you arch, as you flatten, just really enjoy the journey of your lower back and enjoy the, the traveling of the pressure, the squeezing of the buttocks, the, the connection through the front of your hips to the back of the buttocks, oh, a sense of the belly as it expands as you move. I'm just feeling that. Is there ease? Do you need to move a bit slower? Do you need to move a bit less? Or really it be in the fact that everything that you're doing is wellness in your body and you're cultivating the practice of moving in wellness, not forcing your body, not moving into pain, but moving in wellness. It's such an amazing, truly incredible practice to do. So then push your feet down to the floor and begin to roll up along your spine. And slowly, steadily roll down. So as you travel up and down along your spine, as you roll upwards, and as you roll downwards, and just again feel the sensations of wellness, of comfort, of ease and stay in those sensations. Really stay that you're feeling the wellness of you, the, the ability of you to be in your body and listen to the deep sensations and move and adapt and really be aware as you travel up and down along your spine. Nice. And then rolling up one last time, you're pushing your feet deeply into the floor, your feet are really strong, and then just pause, lifting your hips upwards, your bum is squeezing, your feet are really strong and pushing down into the floor. And you have a sense of the, the work of the pelvis, the buttocks, the thighs, the knees, and the calves. Your toes are wide, your feet are pushing firmly into the floor. Maybe try and push your heels a little bit more into the floor. Just feel that where that energy moves to as you push your heels a little bit more. Nice, and then roll slowly and steadily all the way down. And when you're all the way down, just let that pause, let that land, and let it soften and settle. And then slowly begin to drop your knees from side to side and feel how this is a different sensation. As you drop your knees from side to side, the movement is creating different sensations in different places. So feel into that. Notice what happens as you drop your knees from side to side. And I'm always trying to notice what I don't feel or what I, what's new to me in a posture. Rather than what I know, where can I connect to? Like, can I feel my chest moving as this happens? Can I feel how this affects my collarbones and my neck and shoulders? Can I feel the traveling? of the stretching from my feet to the top of my head. How do I feel this through the whole of my body? As I sway my knees from one side and sway my knees to the other side. Really cultivating that connectivity and inquiry into how is the whole of my body? How is the whole of me right now? 
Nice. Coming all the way back up to center. From here, draw your right knee up towards you. Interlock your fingers and squeeze your knee down towards you. And you feel another set of sensations. This will be deeper into the hip, deeper into the belly, into the buttock, into the knee, the lower back. The fingers are stronger. The upper arms are stronger. Just feel that. There's work happening in many different places. Flex into that heel so your heel is traveling away from you, your toes are traveling up towards you. Nice. And then it's the right leg that will travel. So release the right leg and let it float straight out so it floats just above the floor. So you're extending your leg out and really surging down into your heel. And then draw your right leg up towards you. Interlock your fingers and pull your right knee down. And then unfold that leg and let it reach out so that your right leg is floating straight out and your heel is pointing away from you. And then draw your knee up towards you and squeeze your right knee down deeply. Nice, one more time. Let your right leg extend out, your heel is pulling away from you. And then draw your knee up towards you, squeeze your knee deeply in. Nice, bring both arms beside you and then begin to draw a circle with your right knee. So keep pushing the left foot really firmly into the floor. So the left foot anchoring, the left foot stabilizing, will keep the belly and the torso still as you roll your knee in a big circle. And then roll your knee in the other direction. Rolling, feeling the deep of your belly, the deep of your hip. And you're mobilizing deeply into that thigh, into the knee. Nice, come back to center. Stretch your right leg straight up towards the ceiling and reach down and hold on either behind your thigh, your knee, your calf, your foot, maybe even your toes, who knows? You know, sometimes there, there's these gifts where your leg goes, oh, I can do something a little bit extra today. And then hold on firmly and then drop your shoulders a little bit towards the floor. So you're sinking your shoulders down and the back of your thigh is lengthening. Point through the right foot and flex into your heel. So as you move into that foot, just feel the sense of as I move my foot, what are the sensations that travel down into my leg, into my calf? And then draw a circle with that right ankle. And as you roll that foot in a circle, feel into your ankle, feel into your foot, and then roll the circle in the other direction. Nice, bend your right knee, squeeze it down towards you. And then lower the right foot to the floor. Just notice, is there a difference between the right side and the left side? For me, the right side is warmer and it feels a little bit bigger now. Bring your arms beside you. You can stretch your arms straight out into a cross if you wish. And then just drop your knees from right to left. And as you drop your knees from one side to the other, again, just feeling into the sense of your body. The sense of how you rock in one direction, feeling the belly, and then rock in the other direction. Can you feel the stretch up into your armpits or up into your chest? Or can you feel how your knees are affected by the movement or your feet? Now, how does the whole of your body connect as you drop your knees from one side to the other side? Nice, come back to center. Draw the left knee up towards you, interlock your fingers and squeeze your knee deeply down towards you. Just feeling that, the deep of your hip, your belly, your buttock, your thigh, your shoulders, your fingers. Just feel the deep sensations of left legness. Nice. It's the left leg that will travel. Release the left leg and let it unfold until it floats just above the floor. Arms are long and your Left leg is surging long down along the bone. Bend your left knee, draw it up towards you and squeeze your left knee deeply down. Nice. Stretch the left leg long. Heel stretches away from you. And then bend your left knee, draw it up towards you. Squeeze it deeply down. And again, stretch your left leg away from you. Heel stretches away. And then bend your left knee, squeeze your left knee deeply down towards you. Bring both arms long beside you and then begin to draw your left knee in a circle. Push your right foot firmly into the floor. This will stabilize the belly, the lower back, the pelvis. 
And as you draw the circle into your inner thigh, into the buttock of the hip, really feel how smooth can you make this circle? How smooth can you really articulate that left hip? Yes, and then circle in the other direction, circling, feeling into your hip, feeling into the deep of your thigh, deep of the belly. Nice, draw your knee up towards you, squeeze it down towards you. And then stretch the left foot straight up towards the ceiling. And then point your toes, flex your foot, point your toes, flex your foot. And one more time, point your toes and flex your foot. Nice, draw your circle with your ankle. And as you circle, really feel into the deep of your foot, the deep of the ankle. And then circle in the other direction. To the other side, we were pulling on the legs, so hold on to your leg as you do this. So you circle with your foot, you're holding on to your left leg, and just feel that. Nice. Bend your left knee, squeeze it towards you, and then lower your left foot to the floor. Stretch your arms straight out to the side, into a cross, and then sway your knees from side to side. And as you drop your knees down on one side and then down to the other, see if you can feel the drag through the belly of the movement. The sense of as you drop your knees over to the side, your back is arching, and when you bring your knees back to center, your lower back is on the floor. So feel that it's like a spring, it arches to give you space, and then you pull it onto the floor. So feel the arching into the lower back as your knees drop down, and then the flattening into the floor, arching, and flattening into the floor. Bring your feet so they're a little bit wider, as wide as your mat. So your feet are very wide and then drop your knees from side to side here and maybe give the so if you drop your knees down to the right give your left knee a little bit of an extra mm, pull or push or encouragement down towards the floor so you're not forcing it you're just listening to how might my leg travel a little bit closer to the floor in wellness how do i move so that i'm hearing wellness my range of motion as i travel my knee down and then travel my knee down. Nice, one more time. And travel your knee down, drop into one side. And then travel your knee down over to the other side. How ah, wonderful. Walk your feet until your feet are really close together. And then keeping your feet on the floor, just get all your toes off the floor. So it's like your toes have stood straight up off the floor. And then grab the floor with your toes. So really squeeze the floor like if you're going to try and pick something up on your toes and then open all your toes and lift them off the floor. Just your toes, the ball of your foot is still on the floor, and then pull, push your toes into the floor like you're trying to pick up a pencil or something. And again, lift all your toes off the floor. Nice, and then keep your heel on the floor, lift everything else off the floor, and then bring your toes to the floor and lift your heels off the floor. Nice, heels to the floor, lift your toes up, and then toes to the floor, lift your heels up. And just do that a few times, heels on the floor, toes up, toes on the floor, heels up, heels on the floor, toes up, and toes on the floor, heels up. And then without moving your knees, roll onto the baby toe side of your feet and then push into the big toe side of your feet. So don't move your knees, you're trying to articulate your ankles as you do this. So you're keeping your knees centered and you're pushing the baby toe side of your feet down and then you're pushing the big toe side of your feet down. So you're just trying to roll your ankles in and roll your ankles out. Just feeling that. Roll your ankles in and roll your ankles out. Nice. Stretch both legs up towards the ceiling and then shine the baby toe side of your feet up towards the ceiling. So it's almost like you're trying to shine your two feet towards each other and then bring your feet square to the ceiling. Bring your heels together like Charlie Chaplin and then bring your toes together so that they're like Charlie Chaplin as well to be off the direction. Heels together, toes apart. Toes together, heels apart. Heels together, toes apart. Toes together, heels apart. Nice, one more time. Heels together, toes apart. Toes together, heels apart. Nice. Lower both feet to the floor and glue your feet to the floor. So imagine that you're, I was, whenever I say this, I go, oh my God, that'd be so terrible. So imagine you've just super glued your feet to the floor. <laughs> oh God, what a terrible thing to do. So anyways, 
super glue your feet to the floor and now move your knees from side to side but you're not allowed to move your feet off the floor so your feet have to stick really strongly and how far can you move your knees in one direction and how far can you move your knees in the other direction so as your knee as your knees move to the right your left foot has to stay really strongly down and so really try and keep your feet so as soon as i do that i feel like something works more in my belly because i have to push my feet or grip the floor with my feet a little bit more so as i rock my knees from side to side and keep my feet flat on the floor i just notice how that is in my feet in my ankles nice come to center and now rock your knees from side to side and roll over onto the baby toe side and then roll over onto the big toe. So rock from side to side your knees and notice how you're rolling onto the sides of your feet and the soles of your feet are coming off the floor. So you're just doing that same movement we were doing a moment ago at the very beginning of the class, but now you're allowing your ankles to follow your knees. Super, come back to center and squeeze both knees up towards you and just hug them in towards you. breath is in your belly and just feel like you're softening at the lower back And so lower your feet to the floor and then roll over onto your side and come into your cat pose. So as you roll all the way over and come into your cat pose, just feel like your knees are underneath your hips, your hands are underneath your shoulders, and then grab your fingers onto the floor. So really try and grip the floor with your fingertips. Nice. And then just lean a little bit more forward with your torso so you feel that there's more weight into your hands and then lean a little bit back into your bum so that the weight is out of your hands. So you're just rocking your weight forward a little bit so you feel more weight into your hands and then rock your weight away from your hands. So you just feel like you're rocking forward and backwards, but it's about your hands. So you feel less weight into your hands as your bum goes back and more weight into your hands as your shoulders and hips come forward. So just feel that you're rocking forward and backwards, feeling the weight into your hands. Nice. Come to center and then rock it a bit from right to left. It's like you're swaying your torso to the right side, but you're tra it's like the whole of you. So as I sway to the left, most of my weight is into the left hand. And as I sway to the right, most of my weight is into the right hand. So I just feel like swaying from one side to the other side. Nice. Come to bring your elbows on the floor, make fists out of your hands really strongly, and then open your fingers wide. And then make fists out of your hands and open your fingers wide. Make fists out of your hands and open your fingers wide. And then make fists out of your hands, but roll your thumbs in a big circle. So really roll in a huge circle with your thumbs. And then roll in the other direction. The other direction for me always feels a little bit weird, but notice how that is for you. Nice. And then stretch the area between your thumb and your first finger. So you feel like you're stretching the webbing and then your first finger and your second finger and then the second finger and the third finger and the third finger and the fourth finger. So you're trying to stretch the webbing between your fingers. So how do you stretch the webbing to the first one, the second one, the third one and then the fourth one? I just feel like you're really trying to stretch. And I stretch your palm as much as you can. So for me to do that, I pull my fingers away with my, so it's like I open my palm really wide and then my fists. Then open your palm really wide, feel the stretch into your palm, and then make fists. And one more time, open your palm really wide, and then make fists. Nice. And then make fists out of your hands so that your hands are like your, your thumbs are facing the ceiling in a fist, and then draw your knuckles towards each other. Just feel that deep. So it's like you're pulling your knuckles towards each other. Your thumbs are now underneath your nose practically. And then bring your hands away, and then pull your knuckles towards each other and then away and one more time pull
Pull your knuckles towards each other and away. Nice. Bring both hands to the floor and then roll your shoulders in a big circle. So as you roll your shoulders, just feel like you're trying to move the shoulder blades or roll into your collarbones or really move deeply into the upper spine. How would you move deeply into your upper spine? So feel that. How would you really move into it? And then roll in the other direction, moving deeply into your upper spine and shoulders. Feeling it, connecting it. Nice. And then shoulder shrugs, pull your shoulders deeply backwards and then push your shoulders forwards. Pull your shoulders deeply backwards and then push your shoulders forwards. And pull your shoulders deeply backwards and push your shoulders forwards. Nice. And now the lower back, round your lower back and then arch your lower back. Nice. So do the whole spine, round your lower back and your upper body. And then arch your lower back and your upper back. If you're doing the cat pose, but you're really hearing the deep of your lower back and the upper body. So you're just trying to really mobilize, connect, and allow. Nice. And then just rest into your child's pose. So all the way down, whatever way you do, from resting into your child's pose. Feel a sense of resting, allowing, settling. Your arms can be forward, your arms can be back. Main thing is that wherever you are, your arms feel comfortable. Nice. And then coming all the way up onto your hands and knees. And then push back into a downward dog. So lifting your knees off the floor, pushing back into a downward dog. You're stretching back into your downward dog. And you just have a sense of lengthening through your calves, stretching back into your legs. And you just feel the length of your body. So as always, if you're not doing the downward dog, then find a variation that suits you. I'm kind of doing a one-legged downward dog at this. There's still no weight into my other leg, but it just feels really lovely to find my version of this, adapting it and listening into it. And then just bending one knee, stretching the other leg. And bending one knee, stretching the other leg. So as you bend and stretch and bend and stretch, just hear your legs, hear your back, connect into the length of your body. Nice, drop both knees to the floor. And then from here, just Tuck your toes under so they're flat to the floor and sit your bum back towards your feet. And just feel the sense of stretching into the front of your feet. Nice. And then bring your weight forward. Bring your toes to stand. So your toes are, you can see your nails if you were to look back. And now sit your bum back. So you're stretching into the soles of your feet. Your toes are stretching. You have that sense of really deepening into the toes. Nice. And then come forward. Bring your toes flat, sit your bum back. And then bring your toes to stand and sit your bum back. And come all the way up. Stretch your right leg long, your toes on the floor, and you have that sense you really feel like you're really stretching into your calf. So you feel your calf behind you, you're pushing into your hands to bring the weight a little bit more back into that right calf. And then bend your right knee, draw your knee towards your elbow on the right. And then stretch your leg long, bring your toe to the floor, stretch into your calf. Nice. Bend your knee, bring your knee to your elbow. Stretch your leg long, stretching into your calf. Nice. One more time. Bend your knee, bring your knee to your elbow. And then stretch into your calf. From here, you're going to round your back into the cat pose. Rounding and arching. 
Grounding and arching. That's one more time. Rounding and arching. Nice. Step that right foot to the outside of your right hand. Balance. Lift your feet, off, hands off the floor. Just wiggle your fingers a little bit there. So your right shoulder is pushing into your right knee and you're wiggling your fingers off the floor. Bring your hands to the floor. And then just find your the, a, a low lunge. So your right foot is to the outside of your right hand. Your right knee is bent and your knee is near your shoulder. And then from here, we're going to round our back and arch your back with some force. This is really deepen into that right hip. So listen to it. Only go as far as feels comfortable. Rounding your back and arching your back. Nice. And again, rounding your back. Hear the whole of your spine. Can you be gentle and moving into the whole of your spine? One more time. Rounding your back. And bring a little bit of movement into a lot of different places. And then come to neutral. Slowly sit your bum back towards your heel on the left. So stretch out through the right leg. And then rock forward. You're just listening how do you rock forwards and backwards. Stretching into that right leg. And then forward. Stretching into your right leg. Nice. Bring both knees towards each other. Stretch the left leg long, so your toe is on the floor, your leg is long behind you, and you're bringing weight back into that left leg, so you're stretching into your calf. Nice, and then bend the left knee, draw your left knee to your left elbow, and then stretch your left leg long, so your toe is on the floor, stretching into your calf. Bend your left knee, and bring your left knee to your elbow, Stretch your leg long, toes to the floor. Nice. Last one. Bend your left knee, bring your knee to your elbow, and stretch your leg long. Great. Come into a cat pose, rounding your back. Your left leg is straight, arching your back. So a little bit of movement in as many places as possible. So it's not about one place moving, it's about how many different parts of my body can move in connectedness, move in flow as I do this. Rounding, many different places moving. And arching. Nice. Take that left foot, bring it to the outside of your left hand. Settle in to really bend your left knee deeply. And then round your back. And arching. Round your back. And arching. One last time. Round your back and arching. Stretching out to the left leg, sitting your bum back. And then rocking forward, stretching out to that front leg. And then forward, one last time. Stretching out to your front leg. And forward. Nice, bring both knees together and then just come to lie, come sit on your mat with your legs long in front of you and just wiggle your fingers again and then just have a bit of a wiggle, maybe stretch out through your arms, how would you do that, how do you stretch into your body, I tend to always lean from side to side, have a bit of an armpit stretch just feel how do you stretch into your arms? Nice, and then bring your arms down. So, there's this thing that I've been doing loads of research recently. I love doing random research about things, and it's about um, um, rotational core dynamics, it's called. So, when so a lot, of, a lot of the Pilates and a lot of those things they talk about, you know, really contracting the core, you know, keep your core strong and all this kind of stuff. And actually, they're looking at this whole science of like. That does, actually does nothing. It actually doesn't do anything for us at all. Because in real life, our core is never rigid like that. You know, we're never sitting totally rigid, you know, and we shouldn't be, you know, because in life we should be moving. So make two fists out of your hands. And so rotational core movement is what we do every time we, we walk. So like you're in Baywatch, you know, do, 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 do. start doing slow motion Baywatch walking with your arms. So it's like you're, you're, on, or you're running down the beach in Baywatch and they, 
There, as you run, your, your elbow and arm come forward, but as you do that, notice how your shoulder comes forward and the other arm comes way back. So in some ways what we're doing is like lawnmower and bow and arrow with one arm and we're reaching and punching forward kind of on some level with the other arm. Just feel that, feel how your torso is oscillating. And then slowly, you don't have to stretch your arm out far, it's just the rocking of your elbow almost. Begin to like go back into real time and be kind of power walking. So power walking. Those of you who've been in last night's class and tonight, uh, last night's class, we were doing this and Monday we were doing this. So kind of, and then kind of, oh dear, I've got to run for the bus. <laughs> so as you do this, don't focus on your arms, focus on the feeling in your belly and your spine. So something should be working a little bit. So your torso and your shoulders should be swinging. So your shoulders are swinging forward, your shoulders are swinging backwards, and your rib cage is rotating as you do it. So what I started to notice when I was, you know, in this thing that I have at the moment, is that my body started longing for rotation. So I'd end up in the morning kind of just sitting on my yoga mat and just swinging from side to side a lot. I couldn't work out, I was like, what is it that I'm doing? Why is it that I'm doing this? And then I realized I long to walk and I long to swim and I long to cycle. And that's all this movement, okay? And actually our gut needs it, our lungs need it, our ribs need it, our, our whole spine needs it. So if, for example, you go, oh, I'm sitting at my computer and I've been here for the last two hours and I really must get out for a walk, but actually I don't have time, but oh, hold on, I'm gonna set my clock for two minutes and I'm just gonna go for a little <laughs> run here in the seat. And actually you'll get loads of benefits just doing this. So a little bit fast, we'll just go for a quick jog, really, really fast, okay, just kind of swing. And then pause, bring your arms down. So that is amazing for your spine. It's amazing for your rib cage. It's amazing for everything. So you're just pausing there, letting that settle. Yeah, it flushes, it feels like it kind of flushes out everything in my, in my, you know, my torso a little bit. That's just exactly what we need when we're sitting a lot, okay? So from here, just bring both hands and bring them over towards the left-hand side and just push them into the floor. And just feel that, just try and get your hands down to the floor and just notice your lower back, the rib cage, your neck, your shoulders. Notice that every time you breathe, something changes in the right side of your back, in the right side of your waist. and then both hands to the other side. So both hands push into the floor. You're trying to bring both hands flat to the floor over on the right hand side. And just feel every time you breathe, something lengthens in the right, left side of your waist. And come back to center. Reach your left hand towards the left and then push your right hand also towards the left. Won't go as far, just feel that. Your left hand is easily there, your right hand is going over towards the left. Now stretch the right hand towards the right and then bring the left hand towards the right. So for me, where my right palm is up and it's pushing forward and my left fingers are reaching. So they're kind of, my fingers are almost at the back of my right hand. But it doesn't have to be either way. Nice. Both arms wide, stretching out wide. Turn your palms up towards the ceiling. Feel your chest opening. And then reach straight up towards the ceiling with your arms. Interlock your fingers and then lean a little bit towards the right and just feel that in the side of your waist. And then come back up to center. And then lean a little bit to the left, feeling that in the side of your waist. And then back up to center. And then just sway from side to side. 
And as you do it, you're trying to bring a little bit of movement into a lot of different places. So not just one place, try and bring it up into the rib cage, into the side of your shoulder, up into the elbow and your wrist and down into the waist. So you're trying to be soft through the whole side of your body. So it's like, how do I side bend and curve into the whole side rather than just focus on one place to side bend into? So often we just focus on the place that's the sore place or the place that is the strongest stretch. But how do you bring a really gentle, soft, kind of like um, yeah, uh, a wave of movement? So maybe feel a place that isn't moving as much and just focus on that in the movement. As you sway from side to side. Nice, bring your arms down. Your arms are so heavy. And just roll out through your shoulders. As you roll, you just feel the deep of your shoulders rolling. And then roll in the other direction. Nice, bring both hands forward in front of you. And a bit like what we were doing earlier, but we're going to do in slow motion. Draw your right elbow back like a bow and arrow and reach the left hand forward. And then change. Reach the right hand forward, draw the left elbow back. And every time you do this, just swing from side to side. So pull the right elbow back, reach it forward, and pull the left elbow back. And again, see if you can bring a, lot, a little bit of movement into a lot of different places. So can you allow your rib cage to move a little bit more? Can you allow your shoulder blades or your collarbones to mobilize and soften just a little bit more? So rather than it being the only place that's moving is your arms, See if you can bring movement into the rib cage and down into the waist or into the neck or into the hips a little bit more. As you draw one arm back, as you draw the other arm back, just one more time each side, a little bit of movement into a lot of different places. And last side. Nice. Bring both hands to your thighs and just roll out through your belly and again. Little bit of movement into a lot of different places. So how do you, as you roll, feel not only the places that really are talking to you the strongest, but maybe up into the back of the rib cage a little bit more, or the front or the sides of the rib cage, or up into the shoulders, or the lower back, or the deep of the sacrum, and then roll in the other direction. You're just listening. How do I include more movement into a few other places. Can you allow your head to follow the movement or your neck to follow the movement? How would you allow a sense of connectedness through the whole of your body? Nice. Hands are on your knees, then let your head drop down. And as you drop down, feel like the whole of the back of your body is rounding, not just one place, not just the back of your neck or your shoulders, but the mid-back, the lower back, the neck, all the way. And then lift your spine and look to where the wall and the ceiling meet and feel like the whole of the front of the body is opening. A little bit of movement into a lot of different places. So do that a few times. The back of the body opening all the way through and then the front of the body opening all the way through. Nice. As you round forward, as you lift and arch and lift forward. So as you move from one to the other, even notice as you move from one to the other, can you stay connected to the sensation of the spine moving from forward to backwards? And you're trying to, I really like that mantra, you know, a little bit of movement into a lot of different places. So not forcing the spine to move in one particular place that you know, but trying to encourage all of your spine to move together. So that might be a little bit, rather than one place moving a lot, it's a little bit of movement to the, all the different spaces. Nice, and then come back to center. Super cool. So bend your both knees so your feet are a little bit wider than hip distance apart. And then drop both knees down towards the right. You can bring your right hand to the floor if you wish, or you can have your hands on your knees. 
depends on the flexibility of your left hip and the strength in your waist. So either your hands are on your knees, that's where your waist is able to hold your own body weight, or your right hand is on the floor, you're leaning a little bit off the side. And just feel that through the legs, through your hips, and through the belly. Nice. And then bring your right hand to the floor, it'll probably be easier for this bit, and then round your back a little bit, and then lift your chest and look forward. So now we're doing a slow and steady, same as we were doing a moment ago, but we've changed the position of our legs so the muscles in our hips, in our belly, in our spine will be really different. Rounding your back and arching your back. Nice. Keep your right hand where it is. Reach your left hand as far as you can towards the right. Nice. And then pull your elbow back as far back behind you as you can. And then reach your right hand towards the right. And then pull your elbow back as far back as you can. And one more time. Reach your left hand towards the right. And then come all the way back. Good. Bring both knees up. And just wrap your elbows around your knees. Pausing there. Knees are wide. Feet are flat on the floor. Feet are really wide. Really very, very wide here. And then drop both knees down towards the left. And as you drop down towards the left, you have a sense of upright through the torso and if it feels too strong into that right hip and the waist then just bring your left hand to the floor or have your hands resting on your knees see how that is for you nice bring your left hand to the floor to support you and then round your back notice how it's different straight away when i move my right hip goes oh this is really different and then when i arch my spine on the left speaks to me. So notice where this speaks to you as you round, draw your forehead down, as you arch and you look up. One more time. Rounding, drawing your forehead down and arching, lifting up through the spine. Take your right hand and reach it towards the left. And then pull your right elbow back as far as it'll go. And then reach your right hand towards the left. And then pull your arm back as far back as it'll go. One last time. Reach your right hand towards the left. And then pull it back. Nice. You come all the way back up. Both knees are wide. Feet are flat on the floor. And then just drop your knees down towards the right. And bring both your right hand way behind you. And then your left hand maybe comes way behind you as well. So you're behind yourself. And then maybe you bring your nose down in the direction of the floor. Or maybe that's far enough, just bringing your hands down. Okay? Maybe you drop down, draw your nose down towards the floor. Coming back up, lift the left hand up. Lift the right hand up. Bring your knees back up to centre. And drop both knees down towards the left. And then keep going, bring your left hand behind you, bring your right hand behind you, maybe stay there, maybe that's enough for you, or lower your nose down in the direction of the floor. And push into your hands, lift the right hand up, lift the left hand up, and come all the way back up to centre. Nice, how wonderful. So drop your knees wide and bring the soles of your feet together, just a moment here. In, hold on to your shins and pull, and as you pull, feel a length through the whole of your spine. Just a sense of, you know, connecting. I've said it like a million times in this class. A little bit of movement into a lot of different places. But can you connect the sacrum just a little bit, the lower back a little bit, the mid back a little bit, between your shoulder blades, the back of your neck, your shoulders widen, your elbows drop, your knees widen, your feet connect. So it's just that sense of, a tiny little amount in many different places actually gives you a sense of wholeness rather than just pull your shoulders back and focus on pulling your chest forward, which is a thing you could do in this, but you kind of obliterate all the other sensations. Nice. And then just turn and look over your right shoulder slowly. Notice what you do, how you do that. Come back to center. And then just turn and look over your left shoulder. And coming back. And drop your ear down towards the right and coming back and drop your ear down towards the right and 
Bring them back. Bring both hands either side of that right knee. Imagine you can bring your nose down to your knee. Not really, but just that direction you're going in. Swing all the way till your hands are either side of the left side. Bring your nose down towards the left knee. And coming all the way up now. Stretch both legs long. And just roll out through your ankles. Roll out through your toes. Roll out through your wrists. Roll out through your fingers. Wiggling your eyebrows. You get tall through your spine, wide through your shoulders. Nice. And then come all the way forward to the front of your mat. Hold on to your knees and lift your feet off the floor. So your feet are floating off the floor. Nice. And then take your right hand and bring it to your left shoulder and look towards the left. Nice. Bring your right hand back to your knee. Bring your left hand across to your right shoulder and look towards the right. And come back to centre. Right hand to your left shoulder, look to the left. Coming all the way back. And then left hand to your right shoulder. And all the way back. Nice. Bring your feet to the floor. And then stretch both arms out long in front of you. Bring the right arm in front of the left. And then wrap your arms around your shoulders. And just give yourself a hug. <laughs> just really feel that. Oh, it's just so lovely. Hugs are amazing. Just feel that. Just feel the sense of contact and the squeeze of the containment of your hands holding the deep of your shoulders, the warmth on your back, the sense of the squeeze of you. Nice. Change your arms, raise your arms forward, bring your left arm over in front of the right, and just give yourself another hug. And just squeezing, appreciating, loving. Nice. And release. Hold on to your knees. Slowly rolling back all the way down until you land on the floor. Bring your two feet to the floor, stretch your arms straight out to the side and just feel your arms opening there. Mine are kind of going, I'm just loving the fact that they're opening and resting wide on the floor. Feet are either hip distance apart or mat distance apart as you wish. And then just drop both knees down towards the right and turn your head towards the right. And just really resting deeply there. If you feel like your, your pose is too deep, then reduce it by either bringing your feet closer together or bring your knees up a little bit or just find how would you soften this. Maybe move one leg a bit further. Really, like allow that you adjust and listen. Don't struggle because one of your legs feels tight because you've done the garden. Really acknowledge it, be with it, be kind to it. Nice. Bring your head back to centre. Bring your knees back to centre. Drop your knees down towards the left. Turn your head towards the left. Again, shift it, move it, adjust it. Do whatever it is that you do. And come all the way back to center. And bring your arms long beside you. And just pausing there with your arms long beside you, your knees are bent. Draw your feet to their hip distance apart. Just flatten your lower back down. And then arching into the lower back. Flatten your lower back down. And then arching into the lower back. Nice. Either keep your knees bent or stretch your legs out or Rock over onto your right side, or whatever way you do, find your way of coming into your resting pose. Whatever way, whatever shape that takes. And just feel down into the deep of you that you're hearing the whole of you. Whatever pose, whatever position you choose to be in. 
Maybe you get a blanket. Maybe one leg is straight, maybe one knee is bent. Maybe your hands are resting on a, on a part of your body and you're just connecting to it and breathing into it. So as you breathe, let's practice that thing of a little bit of movement in many different places. So there's, there's movement in your nostrils when you breathe. There's movement into your throat. There's movement into the, the deep of the collarbones, the lungs, the upper, the mid, the lower lungs. Your rib cage moves, your spine lengthens, the diaphragm drops, your belly expands the waist expands and your lower back and pelvic floor expand. And then the exhalation is the opposite direction. So every time you breathe, see if you can feel three or four different places moving as you breathe. It doesn't have to be deep, it doesn't have to be anything. It is, your breath is, it is moving, it, it is connecting. Sometimes when I begin to feel a little bit of movement in many different places, I feel like I'm like a, an ice field. Like one of those amazing, it's like a landscape that looks like it's all one. And then suddenly you realize there's just loads of plates of ice all moving and bobbing on the water beneath. And there's always some shifts and movement and flow. And there, there's a sense of connectedness, but there's also an independence about all of them. There's also a chaos to all of that. So can you be really mobile and fluid and chaotic and uncontrolled or, you know, yeah, a sense of flow in your breath or a freeness in your body as you inhale, as you exhale, that there's a, a little bit of softness, a little bit of movement, a little bit of connection and it's you're trying to connect and be with the flow of, it's the water underneath that's creating all of this amazing movement. So it's the air traveling into your body. And it's the freedom of your body to really receive that breath and be nourished by that breath. So as you inhale and as you exhale, you are, you are mobile and free as you connect into many different parts of you that move. Take a longer, deeper breath and let it surge through you like you're awakening, arising. And maybe stretch your arms overhead. And as you do so, feel that, oh, that kind of surging feeling of your breath 
that pandiculation, that yawny feeling, maybe surge down into your toes and stretch into your fingers and just get a sense of awakening into your legs and into your arms and into the whole of you. And then just squeezing your knees up onto your chest or rocking your knees from side to side or just rolling your knees in a circle or swaying in a circle or whatever it is that you do. Twisting, rolling, stretching. And then slowly rolling all the way over onto your side. And coming all the way into a somewhat seated position.